Today, the concluding stage of the USA Pro Cycling Challenge will end in Denver after a week of racing around the Rocky Mountains. It will finish in the shadow of the Capitol Building in the state capital of Denver. The overall lead is Levi Leipheimer of America. Can he win? We'll find out later. Let's go first to the New York studios. The final day of the USA a Pro Cycling Challenge as Levi Leipheimer, the American who has led this race for the past three days, now tries to defend it on the final day to Denver. For six days in the Rockies, a pack of elite cyclists has faced a considerable challenge beneath the heights of Colorado's astounding peaks. From the Tour de France champion, Cadell Evans, to a world-class contingent of Americans, they've climbed the state's most iconic mountains, reaching altitude in excess of 12,000 feet. The one electless veteran, George Hincapie, an emerging young contender, TJ Van Garderen, and the late-charging sprint specialist, Alaya Viviani. Numerous competitors have made their bid for momentum, but this week has largely been the domain of one American, who now carries the yellow jersey tantalizingly close to the finish. One last day to crown a champion in Colorado, a climb up Lookout Mountain, and a final decisive sprint into Denver. Stage six of the USA Pro Cycling Challenge is next. of world-class bicycle racing through the highest mountains in the state of Colorado all comes to an end today with stage six of the USA Pro Cycling Challenge brought to you by Icon LASIK. We'll start in Golden. In fact, we've already started in Golden because we are bringing you live coverage here and the riders will finish in Broadway and 14th in the shadow of the Capitol building here in the state capital of Denver. And it is a perfect day and it should be a day for the sprinters. Hello everybody, welcome to our coverage here of this sixth and final day of cycling here in the USA uh, Pro Cycling Challenge. I'm Phil Liggett, I'm joined by, by Paul Sherwin. We have had a week of racing bringing here to the United States the best field ever assembled. The whole podium of the Tour de France, first, second and third, are in this event. The top Americans who did so well in the Tour de France are here. Paul, it is the best field, but what's more, we've seen an incredible week of racing. Well, on top of that, Phil, you've got to think about the crowds. There's tens of thousands of people have come out to see this race. It has been a Tour de France type atmosphere. And I don't think I've ever been to a bicycle race anywhere in the world that has been to the high spots that we've attained here in the state of Colorado. A number of times we've exceeded 12,500 feet of climbing. That's right. We call those the queen stages. The cyclists from Europe have never raced that high. In fact, I don't think any cyclist from professional world has ever topped out 12,000 feet in two, two mountains on the same day. But at the end of it all, Yesterday, it was Levi Leipheimer who took over the leader's yellow jersey, or more uh, correctly to say, to consolidate the lead. He's now held the lead for the last three days of cycling. And look at this as we show you the United Healthcare overall standings. You will see that the Americans, uh, five Americans who took part in the Tour de France in July and did so well, command the top five places overall. No, they certainly did. But look at the time gaps, Phil. That's why it's going to be such a dripping stage today. Only 11 seconds to second place, 17 seconds a bit further back to third place TJ Van Garden Cadell Evans the Tour de France champion in seventh place 118 back well what a beautiful day it really is now as we catch up with these live pictures and come straight in with Levi Leipheimer they have been hitting him hard today but for the moment uh, everybody is together that matters in this race the people in Golden and we're now saying farewell to Golden we've been over Lookout Mountain we're now bound for Denver and another big crowd but this race in Colorado has really opened up the public's imagination that there are hundreds of people here now while there is no action here little group trying to get off the front we will come back if there's any decisive moves but let's go first of all and remind ourselves how this all began this week The race began its seven-day journey around the state of Colorado with an opening prologue time trial over 5.2 miles from the Garden of the Gods Park 
and then race down into the center of, of Colorado Springs. The big attraction, the runner up in the Tour de France, Andy Schleck. Yeah, but also Cadell Evans making a whirlwind trip around the world to be celebrated in Australia to drop off here in Colorado Springs. Cadell Evans, the first Australian winner of the Tour de France, but then the action started. Christian van der Vel, the American rider, laid down a time that seemed to be good enough to decide the day when he arrived at the finish, eight minutes and 29 seconds. Yes, but a little bit further after Christian van der Vel started, Patrick Gretsch, not one of the pre-race favourites, but a very good individual time trialist at the under-23 level of the sport. He came out and decided to move the bar just a little bit higher. When he came down into the finishing line, he was going to stop the clock with a brand new best time of 8 minutes and 27 seconds. So Gretsch would win this day, something of a surprise, but all eyes wanted to see Andy Schleck in action. Three times second in the Tour de France, and the man who finished second and lost his Tour de France in July in the time trial to Cadell Evans. He'd never been one of the great individual time trialists of this sport, but he did want to ride well in front of a very big Colorado crowd. Well, the crowd was huge, big time bicycle racing, returning to the state for the first time for more than 15 years. Cadell Evans left the start house to an enormous cheer and raced all the way home, but his time wouldn't be quick enough to steal the laurels of the day. Nonetheless, the first Australian to win the Tour de France was showing himself off to a very enthousi enthusiastic crowd in Colorado Springs. John Hickenlooper, the state governor, applauding here the first yellow jersey of the Tour in Patrick Gretsch. Well, that was the end of the prologue time trial, and uh, after that, the riders went out onto a very tough course because for the first time, they were going to start to climb altitudes around about 11,500 feet, hardly ever seen before on the international circuit. The opening stage from a Salida to Crested Butte, just on 100 miles. It was all coming down to the big finish itself as the riders came up the climb into Crested Butte. Butte to Levi Leipheim, who actually comes from Butte, Montana, sprinted away from the lead group with an incredible show of strength to salute the crowd at altitude with an incredible stage victory, which would give him the race leader's yellow jersey. I think he was also a little bit surprised himself by the violence of his attack, but one man who faded on that final three-mile climb to the, to the line was the overall leader overnight, and that was Patrick Gretsch. So Levi Leipheimer was the next man in yellow as he saluted here with Richard Shatner, one of the major sponsors of the event. Stage two between Gunnison and Aspen is what we call the Queen stage, over 130 miles, topping out at 12,000 feet on two occasions. The Europeans were afraid of altitude. Levi Leipheimer wasn't. Well, he hails from uh, Utah, now lives in Santa Rosa, but after just 25 miles, it was a very nasty crash with a number of riders going down, including the two-time Tour of Italy champion, Ivan Basso. This was the worst pilot of the day that happened on a cattle grid across the road as they approached Cottonwood Pass. The worst injured was Daniela Calagarin of Italy. He went to hospital with two broken hands and facial injuries. He was released, though, and is on his way home today. In the race itself, it was time for one of the top young riders in the world, TJ Van Garden, who went to put the move in towards the top of the climb. Into Aspen, he was looking for the win, which would give him a yellow jersey. But he was robbed up right on the line by the old man of the sport, 38 years old, from South, South Carolina, George Hincap, getting his first victory since 2009, when he was crowned the American national champion. But in second place, T.J. Van Garden from Washington State, he got over the line in second place. That was good enough for him in Aspen to become the young leader now at just 23 years of age of the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. So that has taken us after up to stage two. We'll show you the rest of the history uh, in our next segment. But right now, this is the breakaway as we are watching that. has just started to form. Oscar Sevilla here, Spanish rider in the all-black jersey, rides for a Colombian team is in the breakaway, Javier Mejias, also here, another Spanish rider, Lachlan Norris, an Australian, and Matt Cook is in there for the United States. Uh, none of these riders are a threat to Levi Leipheimer's overall lead, so there won't be a quick reaction to this group, I don't think, and they've made the biggest progress of the break so far today. Those riders are all Team Radio Shack, the team of Levi Leipheimer. Their job, to keep this race under control as we head towards Denver. We'll see you in just a moment. The USA Pro Cycling Challenge is brought to you by Nissan. Innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation for all. And by United Healthcare, helping people live healthier lives. By Colorado.com, 
A world of scenic wonder awaits in a land called Colorado. And by Coca-Cola, open happiness. Welcome back, live action in the Pro Cycle, uh, Cycle Challenge as we head into town now beneath blue skies. These are the four leaders. We saw them just prize open a small gap uh, moments ago. Oscar Sevilla, Mejias and Norris and Cook. So far, no reaction from the field because Levi Leipheimer isn't worried about those four riders affecting that yellow jersey on his shoulders. Well, say we've said goodbye to Golden. We are now setting course for Denver. Once we get into the center of the state capital, we will lap it six times uh, before this race will roll to a halt. Now, we've shown you the story so far. TJ Van Garden was the man in yellow when we left our little tale of the week. So let's rejoin that and pick up with Van Garden defending in the time trial. Stage three was the time trial. It was based in Vail, starting in the center of the town and racing up the mountain nearby. It was to be what we always call the race of truth. And Christian van der Vel, just like he had done in Colorado Springs, was on fire in the time trial. Starting in fifth place in the overall standings, he was looking for a 45 second deficit. And when he came to the top of the climb, he stopped the clock with the fastest time. Well, you know, when it came down a little bit later on, Levi Leipheimer was going to better his time. Levi Leipheimer, known to be a very good exponent of the time trial, made his start and he'd lost his lead the previous day in Aspen to TJ Van Garden, so he wasn't the last man to go. And when he came to the line with an incredible effort, the clock was saying he had the best time over Van der Velde by just 58 hundredths of a second. Nobody could tell him, is it the best or not? But there was still one man to ride, TJ Van Garden, his first day in the yellow jersey. And what a way to try and defend it on this mountain time trial away from Vale, right up the mountain to finish 1500 feet higher. And looking at these crowds, you could be mistaken for thinking we were at the Tour de France. Van Garden came home, he'd given it all. I think he felt the pressure of being the leader of the tour. He'd been beaten. Levi Leipheimer had lost his yellow jersey in Aspen. He'd reclaimed it off TJ Van Garden in Vale. So Levi Leipheimer now back in the leader's yellow jersey with just three days of racing still to go. Stage four took the rides about 50 minutes away from Vail for a restart at Avon, bound for Steamboat Springs, 82.8 miles. All of the riders for the first time during the week were coming home together. They were being led by the Italian sprinter, Elia Viviani, in front of an enormous crowd in Steamboat Springs. Viviani got the victory, and was he delighted? Yes, at just 22 years of age, he's going to prove to be one of the best sprinters on the international circuit in the next couple of years, because just look at this, when he started to see the victory in front of him, he just accelerated again. A clear winner on the day, but all of the race coming home together meant they were all given the same time, so there was no change in the overall standings. Levi Leipheimer had retained the yellow jersey he'd regained in Vail. Yesterday, the fifth stage of the race moved off from Steamboat to the near two-mile high town of Breckenridge. 106 miles on the menu and another massive crowd waiting for the race. The fans' road ID pick of the day was Andy Schleck. He attacked from the start and now he's attacking on Swamp Mountain. He was riding in front of crowds reminiscent of the Alps of the Pyrenees in the Tour de France. He was trying to win. He was, but on the running towards the finish, uh, the group that was with him all came back and they played cat and mouse tactics on the running towards the finish line and they slowed down their average speed and they were caught 700 metres by the to the line by the whole of the main field. Yes, just half a mile from the finish, the field caught back up and that sprinter was there again. Elia Viviani making it two days and two wins for him. He's turned his whole week around. But once more, because all of the riders finished in the same time, it is on this final day of racing, Levi Leipheimer, who rides towards Denver right now in that leader's yellow jersey. So there you are, you're up to date, and they've just entered downtown Denver. They've just flashed through the Smashburger Sprint there to start now six 4.7 mile circuits of the city. What an incredible crowd that's come downtown here today. The peloton are on the right of our picture. They're heading towards that finishing line while these four leaders, Oscar Sevilla, Javier Mekias, Lachlan Norris, Matt Cook, are going out on the first of six laps. Now, as we go back towards the finishing line here, this is the peloton. These are the teammates of Levi Leipheimer, the men we call the domestiques. They've got to do all the work for Levi today. The gap as they're coming through, Paul, just on a minute and 25 seconds, and they're just taking a on-board drinks here as they pass through the feeding zone. 
no stopping, by the way. You'd be surprised how many people say, why don't the guys take time out and do it properly? But time is of an essence. Time is of the essence in a stage rate like this, sir, but it does bring a whole new meaning, doesn't it, to uh, fast food? Because fast food here, you're taking it on board at around about 27 or 28 miles an hour. We just swung in off Colfax now as the main field. Uh, they're looking for six circuits of 4.7 miles or 7.5 kilometers because the images here in Denver are being beamed around the world to more than 160 countries. Live images of the first inaugural uh, USA Pro Cycling Challenge and it has been voted a huge success for the state of Colorado. They really have provided first-class platform for the top. No, they certainly have. Uh, we, we always talk about the sport of professional cycling being a free sport. Well, yes, you don't have to pay tickets to be at the side of the road to watch this bike race, but the event itself will actually generate an awful lot of money for the economy. We go to the uh, Santos Tour Down Under in Australia at the start of the year, and that race over one week generates 40 to 50 dollars for 40 to 50 million dollars of revenue yep. for the towns. And it's money makes the world go round, of course, so that's the way it's got to be. Now, don't, don't adjust the set of our pictures to occasionally freeze like that, because uh, that is to do with the fact we are live, and sometimes the buildings here in downtown Denver might interfere with clean signals for the helicopters flying above. Look at this crowd now. They go through uh, to commence their first of six full circuits here of the finishing town. You've Beautiful shots there of Leipheimer. He must be feeling the pressure of the crowd now as they cheered him on. As we can now see uh, the breakaway, uh, not the breakaway, they're chasing here. He's only got two teammates left in front of it at the moment. There is the breakaway. Matt Cook, the only American in it, sat at the back here, number 134. As we now pierce the crowd here, they are excited to say the least. And. Uh, they have followed this race now for a week around the state of Colorado. We'll take a break, rejoin us in Denver very shortly. Welcome back, we're downtown Denver on the last day now of the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. These four boys are trying to hold off a real chasing field just now, but it's looking good. They're on the first of six laps of the city. Two minutes, 20 is the gap. There's the four names for you of the men trying to slip the peloton. Well, as they continue to course round this opening lap of 4.7 miles or 7.5 kilometres, this is the chance to see the peloton here. It's Ivan Basso, the big man from Likugas Cannondale, who was involved in that nasty crash on day two of the race on the Cottonwood Pass. He's OK, he's bringing it through. He'll be a workhorse today, probably for Viviani. Well, I think that's what's going to happen here, Phil. This is Tim Duggan, the American rider on the front for Team Liquid Gas Cannondale. And I'll tell you one thing, the important thing about Team Radio Shack is they don't really need to chase down that breakaway because none of the riders in that leading group of four are dangerous at all to Levi Leipheimer's overall standings. There's so many different tactics unfolding in a race like this because that's why the lime green rider, the lime green jerseyed riders of Liquid Gas Cannondale are coming forward. They want to catch these guys so they can win the individual stage, even if they can't win the bike race overall. We're looking at the breakaway here now at the moment, but I was just thinking with Tim Duggan, Paul, what a great moment for that young top professional cyclist. He spends most of his life racing in Italy. He comes from Boulder, Colorado. Here he is in his state capital, showing his colours off in this bike race. Yeah, well, we're now looking, there. we've got a little bit of information coming in the, about the riders. Oscar Sevilla at the moment, his heart rate is just inside of 160 beats a minute. He's generating uh, 370 watts on his bicycle, riding along at 26 miles an hour. Now, now, that is a very hard amount of wattage to put out there, and he really is pushing himself. We, we normally would see if it was an easy ride, that wattage would be around about 250 watts. So it just goes to show Oscar Sevilla is giving it hell today. He's making it an effort because he wants to try and keep this group away and perhaps win a stage if it's possible. Uh, but the riders will want the sprinters to get up for that big finish as well. While, of course, how are they going to outwit the yellow jersey of Leipheimer? Today, there's a 10-second bonus for the man that crosses the line in first place. That comes off your overall time for the whole week of racing. Now, if Christian van der Velde were to win that 10-second bonus, he started the day 11 seconds behind Leipheimer, he would still need a time gap of one second uh, to be the winner of the race. So it's a tough calculation. Well, as we continue around this opening lap, the crowd, is there anybody left in Denver anywhere else? One must ask the question. 
It's been a long time coming back to Colorado. It's 23 years since we had the famous Course Classic racing these streets. And funnily enough, we started in Golden today, which is the corporate headquarters of the beer course. And uh, Peter Cause himself has seen a lot of this race this week and has been delighted with the way it's been handled. It is lovely to see these big names here, and obviously everybody knows about the Tour de France. The whole podium is here. First, second, and third. Cadell Evans, Frank, and Andy Schlepp. And we've seen those guys in our camera lenses all week. And now the sun is out. It's the hottest day of the week. And the riders are putting on the style on this last day of the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. Welcome back as we gaze down on the city of Denver here and we're looking at the four leaders in the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. They just started out on their second lap of six circuits of 4.7 miles. Interesting facts for you here. These are the four leaders in the workload, most of it being done by the most experienced rider in the breakaway, Oscar Sevilla, who is a Spanish rider. He's been doing 37% of the work. Well, it looks to me, Paul, they're looking there at the workload with uh, Oscar Sevilla putting in vastly more than anybody else. He's feeling he is the strongest rider in the breakaway. He's putting in 37% of the workload here. Yeah, the, what's happening here, you can see these riders are riding in a line at the moment. What happens when you sit in second position and third and fourth position is you actually save 20 to 30% of your energy while you ride in that slipstream of the rider in front. Oscar Sevilla is a very well-known bike rider on the international circuit. He now rides for this small Colombian development squad. And as he swings off, you'll notice him going to the back of that line of riders. Then he'll pop into fourth position. Yeah. That allows him to get a little bit of an easy ride for a few hundred meters or so before he goes to the front again to set the pace. That's the American uh, Matt Cook, who's got himself on the front at the moment. He's another man that lives in Boulder, Colorado, so he's racing virtually on home soil today and he's putting himself right in front of live television cameras around the world here as he sets the pace at the front now another they're all uh, contributing to the chase now because Garmin Cervello this is the team that won the team award in the Tour de France an incredible feather in the caps of the American squad and now they're trying to bring back these four riders as well well just talking about that team Phil they're uh, quite strange because it started as a development squad right here in the state of Colorado by Jonathan Vortis and it started off as a TIAA Cref and then funnily enough their home building is just away from the finishing circuit here but it's developed into one of the big strong teams of the world. That's right, T. Krev is just behind us here, looking down. I, in fact, came to Denver some years ago to present the Young Development Squad. And look at it now, riding in the Tour de France this year and winning at the team prize. They are here now. These are the leaders are getting on with it. Now we've got Javier Mejias of Team Type 1. It's an American team for the Spanish rider. He's driving at the front. But these boys are getting their tails up. You can sense it. They are performing for a magnificent crowd in Denver. We should see the gap start to fall now. Well, you mentioned that Team Type 1 squad, Phil. It's a team that actually is in the sport to try and promote uh, diabetes, Team Type 1 diabetes. And in fact, uh, two of the riders in the uh, tour, the race here have actually got diabetes. They've been treated by the doctors. They're doing a very interesting test program. Yes, and what they're doing is proving, in fact, that you can compete at the highest levels uh, with these inflictions and treat them and they're controllable. And it's a very, very uh, good way of doing that for Team Type 1 with uh, Mechias in at the leading group of four riders. But the gap now is down to just on two minutes. It was down into up to nearly 2.30, so it is coming back. But will it come back quick enough when they get round to the finish next time? There'll be four laps to go. So don't forget, Sunday night is football night as we watch the uh, Pro Cycling Challenge here. Jason Campbell and the Raiders host Drew Brees and the Saints on Sunday night football. That's tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, here on NBC. Now we're back with the action here of the uh, Pro USA Pro Cycling Challenge. The same four riders. Now, I think there's been a problem with Cadell Evans. He may have had a flat tyre. He's riding in the slipstream of the car. He's not allowed to do that, by the way, the win of the Tour de France. So... He's got to move up smoothly at the outside. This is where it happened. This is moments ago. It looks like a back wheel he's signaling for. Crucial moments, these, because the riders speed away from you so quickly on these finishing circuits. He's just arranged his gears. He'll take the weight off his bike and leave it to the mechanic to slip the change in. Takes approximately 10 seconds if you're on the ball. 
so as Cadell Evans now will be paced back up to the field he's had a flat tire just uh, the head of the field is charging along still under the escort of the riders of Garmin Cervelo and as the lead is now Paul are heading back through to that finishing line that will be four laps to go for them when they get there but the gap is now starting to come down because a number of teams uh, who've got very good fast finishers uh, on their squad have started to uh, share the pacemaking at the front end of the pack and it's come down to a minute and 45 seconds advantage. But these guys uh, are starting to get a little bit ragged as well now and it's Oscar Sevilla, the, the Spanish rider on that squad, who seems to be doing the majority of the pacemaking. He obviously sees this as a final opportunity to get himself into the top ten in this race. Well, to the enormous crowd again, they go through what will be the finishing line, but not for another four circuits of Denver here. I have to say, they're putting up a great show of resistance, these four riders, and the boy at the back there at the moment in the four is Oscar Sevilla. He's the most famous of those four riders, and he wants this breakaway to succeed. But it's the peloton being led up now by uh, one of the most famous cyclists in the sport, and that is Ivan Basso, two-time winner of the Tour of Italy. He's also finished second and third in the Tour de France. He's stamping out the rhythm on the front now, not for himself, uh, but he wants to get his team and his sprinter Viviani back into this league group. Cadell Evans looks as though he's just... Oh, he's still a little bit of work to do coming back towards the peloton after that flat tyre. You never forget, uh, yes, we talk about Cadell Evans, Phil, being the uh, champion of the Tour de France from this year, but he was also in 2009 the world road racing champion. He comes from an incredible background of being a mountain bike racer, two times a World Cup champion. The four leaders continue to share the pacemaking. The way they do it is one rider sits at the front for 100 metres or so and then swings off and goes to the back, and then they keep doing that all of the time. You can see now, what we always talk, Phil, about a, a, an individual victory, but you've got to have a team to get yourself into a race, and that's why the team of Cadell Evans are riding themselves back onto this race. Well, Tim Duggan is now bringing them through here, the man from Boulder, Colorado, but he races in Italy, and he rides with his Italian team. See if we can catch the clock over the finishing uh, gantry there. We can't really come as we pull back. Uh, just to see, it looks as though, what was the time, Paul? 125, uh, so it has come down quite dramatically now. It went up to an excess of 2 minutes and 15 seconds at one stage, and now you can see the damage is starting to be done by the peloton and by this team. It's an Italian team, but with an American sponsor, Team Cannondale. Well, it is so hot now for these riders. Remember here in Denver, it's coming up towards 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's probably getting up towards its hottest temperatures of the day. These four riders hanging in now, but they've only got 85 seconds. Well, just look at that incredible shot as we see this race rolling to its final close today in downtown Denver. No finer fitting backdrop as they ride beneath the shadow now of the state building. These four riders are ahead, but for how long as they're going out towards lap number three? Just coursing down to the back side of the circuit at the moment in the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. We have completed three circuits. We're out uh, on our fourth lap of seven of six circuits around here. So we're on the halfway lap at the moment. Uh, these are the four riders who brought us into Denver on the road from Golden today. And the gap is still holding at a minute 25, but there's a lot of variety of people wanting to chase now. Just looking at Christian van der Bell there, and uh, he seems pretty happy with himself. He had two very, very good time trials, losing, don't forget, in Vail by just 58 hundredths of a second to Leipheimer. And he sits second overall in this race, just 11 seconds back. Now look at this, Leipheimer's come up alongside him. He wears the yellow jersey there with that red helmet, uh, the Radio Shack rider. We expected him uh, to do a good ride in the Tour de France this year. He was robbed of any chance there after a very nasty accident. In fact, all of the team, uh, Team Radio Shack, they probably had all of the bad luck of the whole season thrown into the three weeks of July. They did because it's an American team, of course it is, and it's had a wonderful season, but it all went wrong in the Tour de France. The last lap by these four riders, uh, they've averaged 45 kilometers an hour. That equates to 28 miles an hour. They're not exactly waiting, are they? No, they aren't, but in the main field, Phil, I would expect we're looking at speeds in excess of 30 miles an hour, and that's why they're starting to bring back that gap. It was at one stage at 2 minutes and 15 seconds, and now the last time check that I've got tickling through is a minute 10. Yes, they've taken another 15 seconds since we started uh, this third circuit of Denver, so they are coming back, and on these wide boulevards here, 
they are going to spot them very, very shortly from the peloton, and that's all the incentive they will need. Well, there are other teams too, and uh, it's nice to see the American teams at uh, United Healthcare are not concerned at all about the reputation of some of the big teams, and uh, I wasn't too far off that mark when I said 31 miles an hour, was I? No, and that's what the peloton is doing, so that's why they're pulling them back. They're actually riding about five miles an hour quicker and now than the riders up front. It's going to be pretty tough for these boys at the back of the peloton now because once you make that these sweepers around, it's the guys at the back who have to kick late and they have to chase the wheels in front. Believe me, it's not easy. No, the best place to ride, Phil, is right up at the front, uh, just about there where Levi Leipheimer is. Uh, you're keeping yourself... A, it's a, almost a, a constant speed if you ride in the first 15 to 20 places, but you've got that acceleration and deceleration if you ride in the last part of the pack, especially when you start to go around all of these corners on a tricky downtown course. Lachlan uh, Norris here, the Australian, taking the four leaders through to do his turn at the front with high revs and then get to the back for a quick breather. The Australian here is hoping this breakaway, of course, will stay away, but he's a brand new professional bike rider and sadly, apes to see high rev will leave the sport this year, so he's going to be looking for a sponsor. So as they slip into the back of the line there for Lachlan Norris, there's the peloton down there. The you can't get lost in Denver today if you're riding this bike race because the crowd are telling you which way to go. Well, looking at the leaders, they just passed under the finish line banner there, so they've got three laps to go now. That's about uh, uh, 14 miles left to race to the finish. We'll get the time check on the line, but at the moment we think it's now gone well inside. One minute, here they come. Well, they have shut this right down now. There's been some incredible high-speed chasing well in excess of 31 miles an hour now. This is the team of Liquid Gas Cannondale, part Italian, part American. As they race up towards the line now, it's 45 seconds confirmed. 45 seconds is nothing. To put it into perspective, Phil, that's about 750 yards or 750 metres, if you want. And I uh, tell you what, if they could get into a straightaway, they would now be able to see the prey that they've been chasing around all of these circuits in downtown. Well, I've got to look over the heads of the crowd here, which has proved to be absolutely amazing. What a grand finish this one really is now. The idea of bringing this high-class race to Colorado was mooted by Lance Armstrong, who just picked up the telephone and rang the governor uh, last year, who was then Bill Ritter, and said, what about a big bike race in Denver? He said, I like the idea, let's talk, and this is the result now. It has proved enormously popular. State government has changed since then. It's now John Hickenlooper, who is the new state governor, but guess what? He rides a bike, and he loves the race. He has enjoyed himself at this bike race, and, of course, uh, he's seen many of his... Uh, many of his residents from, Co from Colorado coming to participate in this bike race here this week. But I tell you one thing, Phil, it's not just Colorado that's come here to celebrate this bike race. It's people from all over the United States and a number of people from overseas too. Well, the feeling, they're just uh, grabbing it, anything they can reach out at here, the way they're speeding off these corners and stretching the peloton. Look at that now, as they race for each other's back wheel just to stay in contention. It, when you think they're all together in a big pack, you think they're all under control, but they're not. The boys at the back don't have the legs now to get to the front. That's why Leipheimer is riding safe and sound, surrounded by his team, just to keep him out of trouble. Well, you might just notice, sir, uh, just slip behind him there, the rider with the Radio Shack jersey on, uh, Ivan Rovny, Phil, what he was doing was to stay as close as Levi to Levi Leipheimer as possible. And the perfect ending, if this is the way it's going to be today for this event, the top five riders overall at the start of the day are all American. They are five of the biggest names in the world of cycling, not just in America. No, we're talking about guys like Levi Leipheimer, Christian Van Der Velde, TJ Van Garderen, Tommy Danielson and George Hincapie. Hincapie, at 38 years of age, Phil, is in fifth place overall. And this year, I mean, it blows me away to think that George Hincapie has participated in the Tour de France 16 times. Unbelievable is the word, and next year his enthusiasm is still there. He will make it an outright record of 17 participations in the Tour de France. An incredible record, I doubt whether it will ever be beat. Well, you know what the amazing thing is, Phil? He was actually going to retire at the end of this season, and he said, well, Cadell Evans has just won the Tour de France, so I've got to go on for another year. Absolutely right. He's been on the same team of the nine different individual victories in the Tour de France, seven with Lance Armstrong, and then once with Alberto Contador, and this year on the same team as Fidel Evans. Look at the speed now, the average speed holding on there at 28 miles an hour at 45 kilometres. That's for the breakaway. Let's look at the comparison. 
here for the peloton it's 49 just under 50 and 31 miles an hour in miles so they're closing in that's why we're down to 25 seconds the pack is coming and we've got somebody shooting off the breakaway there, and that'll be Mechias, I think, who's just gone a reaction from Lachlan Norris. And then comes uh, Matt Cook and Oscar Sevilla to pick it up. Well, that was a cheeky little move. A cheeky little move it was, but you know what? These are just the last little throws of this move uh, of, the front, of the front end of the peloton because they know they're about to get caught. Now that they've moved all of the cars, all of the bikes out of the gap, now the main field can actually see these guys. Let's have another look at how that happened here. He went so uh, right, advertised it right in front of the riser. He wasn't coming from behind them. He just shot off the front. And I think uh, Matt Cook on the right there just looked at Lachlan Norris and said, what's going on? Anyway, they haven't got him back yet. Well, these guys feel they've just looked over their shoulders. They know the main field is boring down upon them and uh, they know they're going to get caught very, very smartly. So, uh, when uh, Frank just saying that, uh, Alvaro Mechiera is about to get chased down here because uh, it looks to me as if uh, Matty Cook and Lachlan Norris have decided they want to go. Well, there's the three boys who are chasing. We've got uh, Mechias up front. I think if our camera were to pull back, we must be able to see the peloton now. Uh, so this is the, so the the death throes, if you like, of the breakaway and his team type one, Javier Mechias, who's now going to get up, have to get on with it by himself. Now, that is pretty much an impossible task. He has got to ride on his own, and he's got to maintain an average of 31 miles an hour. So there he is, he's made his move, I think the other three will get swept up pretty soon. Now let's just have a little look here, there's the uh, four breakaways, only two left I think down there now as well. I think uh, Matt Cook may have dropped off the back, decided it's a hopeless cause. Uh, this man now getting the lone plaudits of the crowd here in Denver. In a, what is a glorious summer's day here, I have to say, the mountain weather has been glorious this week with beautiful, crisp, clean air for the bike race. As we dodge around the streets of Denver, we're now looking for two to go at the moment. We'll take a quick break, rejoin us. We're back, we're looking at the peloton now in the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. The peloton that carries the race leader, Levi Leipheimer, and all of the sprint finishes as well. So watch out now because there's only two survivors of the breakaway and they're not together. This is Javier Mechias who broke away. He lost 10 minutes since this race began a week ago. Uh, they don't want him back because he's the next yellow jersey. They want him back so they can have a sprint finish. There on the left of our picture is Matt Cook in the white and Oscar Sevilla. They've both been caught by the peloton. Two survived riding alone, Lachlan Norris and, Matt Cook and uh, uh, Javier Mechias. This is Mechias here tipping down over the top of the brow. People might think who don't live in Denver, it's a flat uh, state capital. No, there's a few little slopes here that bike riders may notice, even if the cars don't. And the peloton comes off that bend now. We're searching for the finishing line and the, uh, for the uh, for this. We're looking at Lachlan Norris here, who's trying to get back up alongside Javier Mechias. May as well wait for him and get together and help each other. They've gone under now with two laps to go. Well, rather strange that because uh, although it looked as if the main field was starting to pull this race all back together they've in fact with that acceleration of Javier Mejas he's stretched out his advantage over the peloton to 25 seconds but I think he's just delaying the inevitable well the, the colors have uh, changed at the front they now match the color of the sky here in Denver they are blue and this is the American United Healthcare's team who's got to the front they have a very fast finishing German cyclist on their squad in Robert Foster Robert has won stages of the tour of Italy and the Tour of Spain. He's never quite got over the line first in the Tour de France, so they want him to win today. Yeah, but he's had a fantastic season, uh, forced up with five wins uh, scattered around the world in such places as uh, Spain and Malaysia and the United States, and of course even in China. That's absolutely right. The world of cycling is uh, really spreading big. In October this year, there will be a first tour of Beijing, uh, which will visit many of the sites uh, of the 2008 Olympic Games in that place. Uh, but right now, this is a brand new race here in the state of Colorado, and quite clearly, the gap of 23 years since we last had a big race here has been felt by the people because they've turned out in huge numbers. Very quickly back to the front now, we can see the acceleration of this young rider, Javier Mechias. 
I'm a little bit surprised, Phil, that if he's looked over his shoulder to see another guy coming across, that he doesn't wait for it because it is two done. riders together would have a little bit of a chance of survival off the front end of the peloton. But uh, one man being chased by one man being chased by 120, that ain't going to work. But you know, he's pulled away. He's pulled away from Lachlan Norris. So if you, there's nobody waiting for Lachlan. If Lachlan can't match his pace, he's still pretty strong. But in the distance is the pack. And now he's seen them coming. He must know this is not going to work now. He's searching for the bell at the end of this circuit now. Uh, Javier Mejias, the peloton being led by Garmin Cervelo. All of the big teams that carry sprinters want to catch these two remaining riders. And they're running out of road. When they come round, it'll be the bell lap. Welcome back. Coming up next after the finish of the USA Pro Cycling Challenge, don't miss the future of golf at the conclusion of America's longest running golf championship. The US Amateur Championship will be next on NBC. We are now looking at the peloton and it looks as though they're about to wipe him out. Uh, you're just back in time because that is Javier Mejias. They've just picked up Lachlan Norris, the other survivor of the four-man break. Very soon we'll be all together. Well, the inevitable pull, I think you said in the next couple of miles it would happen. It's happened even quicker than that. The legs wouldn't carry him any longer. So Mechias is the last man of the four. They're all together. The peloton is now about to head down to the start of the final lap as a huge group pack of 114 bike riders. And Leipheimer in yellow now, he knows these are the dangerous moments, Paul, when everybody wants to win and he's got to avoid any silly crashes. But what's quite interesting over the last 10 minutes, the team that's done the majority of the pacemaking, almost 75% of the pacemaking, has been the team Garmin Cervelo. They're in second and fourth place in the overall standings with Christian Vandervelt and Tommy Danielson. Danielson is not far from home because he actually hails from Boulder, Colorado. But look at now the, the jerseys of the same colors getting together. This is the team starting to get Get themselves organized for the mad dash for the line. Well, United Healthcare have come back onto the front. They're working for their sprinter, Robert Forster, who's had five wins this year. And so he is on form, but you've got to judge your sprint perfectly, of course. But they've had what they don't normally have the luxury of in a stage race. That's seeing the finishing line for the past four visits, and it'll be five before they have to enact the actual finish of the race. So a little bit of a dress rehearsal now as they go through at the bell this time. Well, uh, in the yellow jersey there is Levi Leipheimer. He's in sixth position in that main field. That's a good, comfortable place to be in. A couple of positions in front of him in that pale blue jersey. 23-year-old uh, American TJ Van Garderen. Yes, I know it's a Dutch-sounding name, but in fact, he's from Tacoma, Washington State. And he is a rider who is in third place overall. And I think he's going to be a real star for the future. And uh, He's ridden the Tour de France this year for the first time. But I reckon, uh, give him a couple more years under his belt, he could be possibly the next Tour de France winner for the United States. Couldn't agree more. Riders off the back go down on the right of our picture. We're looking at Van Gogh in line third in the line at the moment. He wears the blue jersey. Yet another best young rider victory for him. Well, Christian van der Velde, he uh, will be waiting, be itching now down on the running towards the finish. He's keeping himself up to the front end of this pack of riders. He's only looking for 11 seconds. It, it's a hard thing to do, though, because always close by him is the yellow jersey on the shoulders of Levi Leipheimer. Leipheimer, Phil, is a very astute professional bike rider. He's been in situations like this before. Look who's riding right on his shoulder there. It's Christian van der Velde. Yes, well, that's what you've got to do. If uh, you're second in the race, then make sure you keep an eye on the man who's leading the race so he doesn't slip you. And the best thing to happen is you slip him and get those few seconds that would turn this into a perfect day from the man from just outside of Chicago. Well, the peloton now, the whole tactics have changed now. They've caught everybody up front. It's TJ Van Garden there who's sitting in second place as uh, he is a very good sprinter, Paul. Now, it's time to remind you, in the race today, the first three riders to cross that finishing line receive small-time bonuses, which come off their overall time. So the winner will get 10 seconds off his time. Second gets six, and then uh, four for the third. And we've got an attack here by Aiden Wilson. 
Well, it's a very good move. This guy is a very good track rider, and uh, he's the national champion of New Zealand, and he's caught everybody off guard. He had a couple of teammates at the front, Hayden Royston, they call him Rowley, and he rolls all over that machine of his currently, and his teammates set that up to perfection because there were two HTC high ride riders on the front of the main field. Now, it gets a bit confusing sometimes because when you are the national champion, you get to wear the national colours of your country, and sometimes people forget that they're riding for the same team. And he is from New Zealand, his colours are black, the national flag colours. Now that was a well-manipulated move there, and that's how he did it. He went out off the wheel of TJ Van Garderen. Just look, now those boys aren't going to lift the pace because they're his teammates. And so they've tried to back it off now. Hayden Walton, the only race he's won this year was in New Zealand in January, and that was his national title. Well, a couple of guys have seen that as a very dangerous move. There are two chases coming across the gap there. We talked about how difficult it was to stay off the front end of a pack like this at speeds of 31 miles an hour around the streets of downtown Denver. But he is the one kind of bike rider who could do it. An incredible back drop back background of racing on the track and his team you see how the HTC riders that's uh, Danny Pate to the front there they're trying to slow the main field going around these corners well Will Duggan has sneaked through there for Lee Gas Cannondale because he doesn't want these boys to spoil the party for the sprinters one lap to go now the bell rings out Hayden Wilson looks over his shoulder there's help coming if three guys can get together the sprinters might be caught out leading the peloton is Will Duggan and again, they're sitting in second, third, and fourth position there, Phil. You've got the riders from HTC High Road, and every time they go around the corner, they just back it off a fraction, giving the advantage to their teammate in front. Right, Will has just been renamed. In fact, it's Tim Duggan who's out there on front. Uh, the same man, he is an American rider on the Italian squad. He's trying to contain these three riders for his team sprinter, Viviani. So the pressure now is they're all trying to get off the front and slip the sprinters and spoil the party. Again, let's just remind ourselves, none of these guys are at all dangerous to the overall standings of Levi Leipheimer because this is all about having a consistent time on every individual stage of a bike race like the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. And Levi Leipheimer has beaten a lot of these guys that are in that breakaway field by 10 and 15 minutes so far. Well, Team Spider Tech here, uh, I think this is Flavio De Luna who they've got in the breakaway. They've only got uh, four riders left of their eight. They've lost four on the way here. Uh, one uh, with quite a nasty crash, Andrew Randell in that big pilot we saw uh, on day two of the race on the Cottonwood Pass. Well, the field now have got to reorganise themselves and these are three separate teams here. That's big because it means three teams behind won't be chasing. Well, these are three now are Hayden Royalston, he's in the, the black and white jersey, the Kiwi national champion, joined there by Oscar Alvarez of Gobernación de Antioquia, the Colombian squad, he wears number 157, and right in there as well for Team Spider Tech, it's Ryan Roth, but he's lost 41 minutes since the start of this bike race, but that doesn't matter, if you can win the final stage, if you can win any stage of a bike race like this, it's a little bit of personal glory. Well, that's why these boys getting away, um, Leipheimer won't be concerned at all. It's not going to affect his final victory, which is now only minutes away. And so he won't chase them. He won't ask his team to chase them down. He'll want the pressure to go on the other teams. He'll sit there. He's in the driving seat now. He's paid the price, and he's got the best seat in the theatre. No, he certainly has. Uh, his team are going to take a, a back seat now and see how the other guys decide to uh, unravel this uh, little bit of a picture problem that they've got because they know that there are a lot of sprinters in this race want to win the final stage. It's a bit of glory for a sprinter to win on the final stage of a, a multi-day stage race like this, and that's why they, they've gone to the back team radio shack. They'll still keep a very close eye on Levi Leipheim because he wouldn't want to lose 10 or 15 seconds in the last couple of kilometres. Well, we're looking at the three leaders now, and with the glimpse we had of the peloton there is indicating a liquid gas for Viviani. I've lost a little bit of control of the chase because the riders aren't on the front of that peloton at the moment. And so to me now, these boys might have pulled off a little bit of a surprise. Well, uh, Liqui Gasso, Velio Viviani, the big, big man who's won the last two stages in a row, have got to get themselves organised. The time gap has now stretched up to 12 seconds advantage for these three leaders. Royalston keeps coming to the front. The other rider in the black jersey, Oscar Alvarez of Gobernación de Antioquia. It's amazing to look at the amount of time these riders have lost, but all of a sudden they found the power and the desire to win the final stage. They've warmed to the flatter roads of Denver after our journey of a week through the highest road in the state of Colorado, Cottonwood Pass, Independence Pass. These boys have been mountaineering and conquered the lot. Now they just want to win here outside of the state house. Now, as we watch here, the three are working well together. A little glance over the shoulder there by Ryan Roth, and he's seen the gap, and he's going to take a lot of uh, good feelings from that. 
the Spider Tech team, which is a Canadian team, devastated by the fact they've lost half of their squad during the week, now are in with a chance of a win. Well, it's an interesting team as well, put together by Steve Bauer, the very famous Canadian cyclist who on a couple of occasions wore the yellow jersey in the Tour de France. And back in 1990, he wore the yellow jersey for 10 days. And he's created this Spider Tech team, and this is Roth on the front with a pale blue jersey, because he wants to build up a Canadian squad to possibly participate in the Tour de France in the next couple of years. So they've really just got to get their head down now and hope that they've done all that is required to win the day. The gap is there, but the time is running out. We are on the final lap of the race. We are halfway around it, and they've not got them yet. But let's think about yesterday, Paul. They came up with 700 yards to go. Well, you might see this orange jersey. Well, in fact, this is, in fact, Andy Schleck. He's wearing the orange jersey for the most aggressive performance of yesterday. And today, he's putting in a sterling ride here again. He has to be one of the most popular foreign riders riding in the USA Pro Cycling Challenge here. And he said last night, he put out on Twitter, that he felt riding over that final climb of the day yesterday, that he thought he was actually in the Tour de France. Well, that is a brave move by Andy Schleck. He really does advertise his attacks, though, and he's gone clear again. So Schleck is trying to bridge the gap to the leaders. What this is doing is keeping the pressure on, full-on pressure, no chance just to get a few deep breaths and ease back and prepare for the sprint. There's no opportunity now. They are racing right up to the red line of their effort. I'll tell you one thing, uh, Andy Schleck has got himself across that gap, well, halfway across that gap, and the main field are actually starting to lose their impetus because the gap from the three leaders to the main field is now stretched out to 15 seconds. The team Liquigas, who are trying to get their sprinter to the front end of this race this afternoon, are going to have to get themselves organised, Phil, pretty smartish. So these are the three riders. The Canadian, Orion Rott, is on the right-hand side. He's just getting back onto the tail. They might well have seen that Andy Schleck is coming, but so too is the fragmenting peloton as they're all trying to sweep it up. They are desperate now to shut this race down for the sprinters. They're not far from the finish. Well, Andy Schleck got halfway across the gap and all of a sudden he stumbled and he's back in the main field very, very rapidly. I can just spot the yellow jersey there on the left-hand side. Levi Leipheimer, he's staying at the front end of this pack. He's not going to be a sprinter down towards the end, but he's just being there to keep away from any possibility of an accident. Schleck is back in the main field. The pale green jersey you might just have noticed there is that young sprinter, 22 years of age from Italy, Elia Viviani. Well, this is a nail-biting finish now for sure. Those three are still surviving. And there is the peloton over the tram tracks, trying now to bring back Ryan Rott. He's keeping the pressure on at the front. He's being followed there uh, by uh, uh, Oscar Alvarez and Hayden Rolston. Those three riders are still working together, but the peloton is chasing. It is the Rabobank team from Holland now who are also trying to whip up the pace. They've got a very good sprinter in Dennis Van Winden. That's pretty much all over here now as we look at one and a half miles to go to the finish 2.5 kilometers the three men try to break the stranglehold of the sprinters but Rolson's gone straight over the top again Rolson who started the move no it's not it's Ryan Roth this time who's made a move as he's tried to crack them as they pick up at Rolson and Alvarez it is still the Canadian trying to destroy the sprinters hopes well, uh, you can see that was a pretty impressive move. He went over the top, but HTC have now launched a man out of the pack down, trying to get across here. The sprinters are trying to control the front end of the main field to make sure that there's no confusion on this running towards the finish. Very shortly, they're going to see a banner over the finishing line, which they will all be waiting for. It'll be a banner that will indicate the final 1,000 metres, one kilometre. And will a Canadian pull this off? A little glance over his shoulder, and he's to get on with it but they're coming at him very very quickly now it looks as though HTC High Road it is indeed who are trying to Danny Pate was the man launching the sprint there as now it's not a United Healthcare to put in their move with Adrian he uh, Hebregard in now the field is all together but they're still not waiting for the sprint they've launched again now this is another attack this is this in fact is TJ Van Garder and the young rider from team HTC High Road he will not give up his third overall and I tell you what as we go under the max as one kilometer to go it's all back together and Levi Leipheimer is on the defensive 1,000 meters from the finish and Leipheimer is still chasing TJ Van Garder and he doesn't want 
wanted to get even a few seconds time bonus. The whole peloton going to the last 800 meters together. Well, this is amazing. These guys at the backfield, they've got no chance of a victory here this afternoon because they are just sitting up. They cannot keep the pace going in this final dash for the line right around the corner. Everybody nice and safely. TJ Van Garderen is in first position, followed there by Levi Leipheimer. Fifth place is Elio Viviani in the lime green jersey. And that's the one to watch out for. Watch for the all green jersey now. Daniela Oss is going to lead him through. He's been pushed off the wheel. No, Viviani's got second around the corner. No, he hasn't. He's got third around the corner. This is going to be a line up for the finish now. Viviani is perfectly placed. Daniela Oss is leading him out for the third day running. Now, can he launch Viviani to win number three of three? And surely he can. He's actually given it to Daniel Oss. He just let his teammate take it. He didn't need to pass him. That was the reward of two days of victories by Oss over Viviani. And there is the winner of the inaugural first ever Pro Cycling Challenge we have seen. And it's gone to the American Levi Leipheimer. Well, Leipheimer was uh, put under a little bit of pressure over those final few kilometers. I take my hat off to TJ Van Garderen. He really tried right the way up to the finish line. But just take a little bit of a wine back, Phil. Uh, Daniel Oss was given the, gifted the victory there by his own teammate. Yeah. And you might have noticed Elio Viviani was looking around over his shoulder to see if anybody was going to beat his teammate. And he sat up there and said, mate, it's yours. It was all too easy at that speed for those two top spinners. The present was returned to Oss. There he is there. He's got his stage win. Unselfishly in these past two days, he's led out Viviani, launched into the line and watched him win. Today, Viviani returned the compliment. But he was waiting there, Phil. He probably could have got past his teammate. He just looked over his left shoulder, his right shoulder, to see if there was any shadows coming up from behind. And once he saw that his teammate could get it, he just st stood back a fraction. But that's when it, that would also confuse the other riders in the spin because they will wait for Viviani to go. And Viviani didn't have to go because his teammate was taking the victory. So it was looked pretty easy in the end, and that's what happens when it all works out. Tim Duggan there will be very pleased with himself, seeing uh, his teammates go first and second after all of his hard work throughout the afternoon here in Denver uh, to bring that race back together in time for the big sprint finish. Well, let's have a quick look at that once more, Phil. Uh, that was a greatly timed sprint there. You can see uh, there is uh, Daniel Oss, and strangely enough, despite the fact that he's a very good sprinter, that's only the second ever victory of his professional career. The last time he won was last year when he won the Giro del Veneto in the northern part of Italy. Yeah, but he too is still a very young rider, 24 years of age, and uh, 22 in the case of Viviani. It's another double victory for Viviani, really, because uh, he's consolidated and has now won this race on points, which is the second most important uh, classification. There he is, he wears that green jersey, a uh, Smashburger points champion, and, uh, and the, the points jersey by there goes to the most consistent daily finisher. Well, he just got second, and the last two days he's won, so you can't be much more consistent than that. Well, I don't know how many people are out there watching this bike race, Phil, but I wouldn't be surprised to hear figures uh, between 120 and 150,000 people on a circuit like that of 7.5 kilometres, five miles around this course, and uh, there wasn't a place I don't think that you could get a spare seat. No, I think probably more than that. Uh, well, the police will tell us that later on. They have done a brilliant job, but the police here, in, uh, throughout the whole state of Colorado, they've created a very safe environment for everybody to enjoy the spectacle of the best bike riders in the world racing on American roads. Now, the rider punching the air there in the black, walking up behind the winner, is actually Jonathan Boyer, who was the first rider to finish the Tour de France back in the early 80s. And uh, he now coaches in Rwanda. He coaches the kids there to become top-class bike riders, and he's brought one or two of them here to watch how it's done. So let's have a look then at the United Healthcare results, see what we can... See how it went. Oss was the victor today ahead of Viviani. It was uh, Fast Freddy, Freddy Rodriguez on the comeback trail, making a comeback to the sport. Uh, just getting into third place there, Danny Summerhill, who's had a great tour and now will sign full papers for Garmin Cervelo in fourth place. Uh, the top six completed by none other than the Mayo Jean, the yellow jersey itself, Levi Leipheimer. A now, the other Colombian climber, is also a pretty good sprinter to get across the line in seventh. And the top ten completed by George Hincapi. They did time the gap, you see. Two seconds is what the referees say. They were behind the leaders today. Leipheimer dashing off in the distance because he's now heading for the presentation where he will be given the last yellow jersey. The one, of course, everybody wants because there's no defending that tomorrow. It's yours uh, to take home. 
So as we look around the skyscrapers here of Denver, we will take a break, and when we come back, we will recap the whole week of racing, as well as seeing all of the prize presentations, and we'll see the podiums and see uh, the men responsible for bringing big-time bicycle racing back into the state of Colorado. There's no doubt in my mind, in talking to all the towns along the route over the last week, there's no doubt in the people of Colorado's mind either. This is what they want, and this is what they enjoy. Perfect weather conditions all around. So don't go away. We'll show you the whole week roundup. We'll also show you uh, the prize presentations, and we should be able to grab you one or two interviews as well. So we'll see you in a moment. Welcome back uh, to the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. Uh, these pictures, as we've seen throughout the week, provided by Colorado.com. And we've certainly seen some amazing crowds watching the race. The race has just finished, but we're going to stay around for the prizes uh, as we look at the people here. Well, there they are, Paul, a marvellous crowd. And now we're waiting for the prize presentation. As... Uh, the, the stragglers, in fact, are going to have to be stopped before the finishing line. Well, while we wait for the presentation, it gives us a good chance uh, to give you a quick journey around the week of cycling here. It's been a magnificent week of cycling with some exciting racing. So let's take you back to the prologue, which started at uh, the Garden of the Gods here, heading down to Colorado Springs. It was just over 5.2 miles as the riders left the park and headed downtown Colorado Springs. Probably the only stage of this race, Phil, that actually went downhill. It started it uh, right there in that incredible park. And a chance for the fans in the United States to see the Tour de France stars, uh, Andy Schleck and Cadell Evans. Yes, the Tour de France podium was here in the race. That's never happened before in the history of American cycling. Christian van der Velde was the 11th rider to start of the 130 riders, and he set an extremely good time for the ride, 8 minutes and 29 seconds. Quite honestly, we thought that would have been good enough to win, but it wasn't to be the case. HDC High Road is an American team, and they have a very fast German on it. When we interviewed him after this, he said, well, I thought I was a favourite because I was confident I could win. Well, we didn't think so, but he did, and he did. He won by two seconds when he got to the line with the time of 8.27. Yes, he bettered the time of uh, Christian van der Velde, but uh, everybody wanted to know how Andy Schleck was going to ride the time trial. The time trial is his nemesis. He, in fact, lost this year's Tour de France because of a bad performance in the individual time trial, but he actually came to Colorado ten days before this event to acclimatise. Yes, and supported all the way by the crowd. He's a very, very popular image uh, wherever he races around the world. And everybody was curious to see Cadell Evans, the first ever Australian to win the Tour de France. He won it in the time trial, but here at altitude, he wasn't riding quite so quickly, but the crowd were there, and they were to stay with us for the next week of racing. In the end, ninth place for Cadell on the day, which meant uh, that John Hickenlooper, the state governor here, was able to present the yellow jersey to a German, Patrick Gretsch. He was now the first leader of the new USA Pro Tour Cycling Challenge. No, a uh, young rider, but uh, then when we went out to stage one, uh, everybody was uh, expecting to have some fireworks, especially on the climb up to Crested Butte or Mount Crested Butte, because that was a finish at ten and a half thousand feet in altitude. And when they got to the finish, they raced through the town of Crested Butte, heading up towards the finishing line, a couple of kilometres outside of town. After 99 miles of racing, it was a battle of the stars. It was all about altitude as well. The crowd was still with us, and it was a hometown boy, Levi Leipheimer, who jumped away, winning a race like in a style he's never before done. That was the beat with a power finish up the hill. He got the yellow jersey of a very, very tired Patrick Gretsch. Well, Patrick Gretsch, not a great climber, but enjoying his first day in the yellow jersey. And at the end of the day, the new yellow jersey going to Levi Leipheimer, looking very radiant on the finishing line, but knowing he was setting himself up for the next stage, which was going to be what the Spanish called Le Taparena, the queen of stages. Andy Schleck still all smart, but it wouldn't be a good day for Andy this day as he raced from Gunnison to Aspen, a massive 130 miles. In the mountains, a high mountain, more than 12,000 feet. No fears of height for the man that's born in the mountains, uh, Levi Leipheimer. This happened. The biggest accident and the only real accident of the race, I'm delighted to say. A mass pileup as they approached the Cottonwood Pass. They hit one of those cattle grids across the road. The man most seriously injured, Daniela Calagarin. Facial injuries, two broken hands, taken to hospital by air. I can tell you that today, though, he's going home to Italy. 
Yes, but when we got to the top of Independence Pass, uh, TJ Van Garderen, uh, the best young rider in this race at 23 years of age, he really put the cat amongst the pigeons and he forced eventually a group of seven riders clear on the way into Aspen. Yes, coming off Independence Pass in the rain, the riders two risks and George Hincapie, who hadn't won a race since 2009, and that was when he was American champion, was back on the winner's rostrum. But the important finish was second place TJ Van Garderen because he gained enough time on the way downhill to take the yellow jersey off Levi Leipheimer. There was a huge amount of time. In fact, he put 45 seconds between himself and the group that contained Levi Leipheimer, but that was on the eve of a very important individual time trial out of Vale, uphill for 10 miles. So we moved to Vale by car for the serious time trial stage now. We always call it the race of truth, a mere 10 miles or 16 kilometers. Uh, but he started downtown Vale, he finished up the Vale Pass, and Christian van der Velde was at it again. This man was on fire in the time trials. No, he certainly was, and he went out to fifth rider from the end, and when he got to the finishing line, he stopped the clock with the best time. But he wasn't the last man to finish, and he had to wait to see what sort of time Levi Leipheimer was going to do. Levi Leipheimer out of yellow, but now the points leader of this race, riding in green. A terrific cheer from a massive crowd in downtown Vale. The crowds too. This was an Alpe d'Huez at Tour de France atmosphere on the climb. When he hit the line, 58 hundredths of a second to the good. He didn't know whether he was first or second, and nobody could tell him at this point. That left the yellow jersey, TJ Van Garderen, to launch his attempt. Now, Van Garderen is a very good time trial rider, but I think today, Paul, the pressure got to him. Well, sometimes one says that the yellow jersey allows you to sprout wings, but sometimes it can be very heavy on your shoulders, and especially when you're a young 23-year-old. TJ Van Garderen lost himself 51 seconds to Levi Leipheimer and the overall lead. Leipheimer had lost the jersey in Aspen, he got it back in Vail and he was now the leader of the tour once more. And the roads ahead were looking kind of sweet. Yes, for Levi Leipheimer, he's been in positions like this in uh, any pike races around the world, whether it's the Amgen Tour of California or the Tour of Utah. But stage four took the riders 83 miles from Avon to Steamboat Springs. And they all came together. It was a bunch sprint in a massive crowd in Steamboat Springs, and they turned on the style. This was the first time we had mentioned the name of Elia Viviani. He was a sprinter. He was back in his playground, and he was delighted to win. Yes, at just 22 years of age, he saw the door opening in front of him, got the turbos whizzing around there and got to the line in first place with a very emphatic win. So, Elia Viviani, sealing himself a place on the Italian World Championship team with his victory here. Meanwhile, Levi Leipheimer, happy to sit in the peloton, come over the line in the same time and retain all of his lead without any loss of any time. So we came to yesterday, we started again off from Steamboat Springs, we are heading now to Breckenridge, 106 miles, the crowd are following the tour wherever we went, and they were ready. The fans themselves had made their pick on the road ID ride of the day, and it was Andy Schleck. He got into the breakaway on Rabbit Ears Pass, and as he went over Swan Mountain, again through a massive crowd of noise, he was on his own, heading for victory. It was a great move, but on the run in towards the finish, he was picked up by the three guys who were with him, and they played cat-and-mouse tactics and slowed down their average speed. And as they came into just 700 metres to go, whoopsie-daisy, here comes the main field. The breakaway was caught in sight of the finishing banner. The sprinters are back in the picture. Nobody expected this on the road to Breckenridge because it sits at just below 10,000 feet above sea level. But he was there again, led out by Daniel Oss. He found his legs to win. Even Oss was there this time on the left there. He got third. Amazing performance by this young man, just 22 years of age. And I have to say, this team, Liquigas Cannondale, well, they've got something to write home about now, haven't they? And so Levi Leipheimer yesterday pulled on the final leader's jersey of this race. Now he was heading towards the finish in Denver, where he hoped to convert it into a winner's jersey. So let's have a look at today's stage here. The Honeymill sign in this morning in Golden, the beautifully named town in Colorado, as he looks out at the crowd. Cadell Evans had a great week of cycling after winning the Tour de France in the month of July. They were all about to ride their final stage from Golden, as we show you here, the Nissan Leaf electric leaf start. As we have this all-electric car leading the boys out to the race start proper. No, but for many of these riders, I think it just goes to show the amount of respect, Phil, that the European riders have showed for this first inaugural USA Pro Cycling Challenge, because when you bring the podium of the Tour de France, 
Cadell Evans, Andy Schleck and Frank Schleck to the state of Colorado, well that's a nod of authority. We went to the only climb of the day, now which was Lookout Mountain. This was a terrific battle because they were trying to battle out the leader and winner of the Nissan King of the Mountains. As they came up onto the climb towards the summit here, there was going to be a change on the very last day. There was no sign of Pedraza in the Nissan red jersey as leader of this competition. And his worst dreams were being realised because in the front group was Raphael Montiel over the top first. Well, Infantino was first, Montiel was second, but those seven points were crucial. Montiel yep. was the winner of the King of the Mountains. But in the group behind, uh, Christian van der Velde was uh, trying to put a little bit of pressure onto the shoulders of Levi Leifheimer, but so too was TJ van Garden. On the descent, a large group of 19 riders started to form with some of the big names. The only man missing was George Hincapi. This was an incredible chase. We went back to Golden after we'd done the circuit of Lookout Mountain this morning, and the riders would not ease up off the pace until in the end, there was a breakaway of four got clear. Oscar Sevilla, Javier Mejias, Lachlan Norris, and Matt Cook. They built up a big advantage, two minutes and 15 seconds over the main field, who were quite happy to let them ride away. But then, once they got into town, the crowd and the wall of noise that they were riding through was immense. Into town they come, it wasn't all good news. Cadell Evans here had a flat back tyre at the most crucial stage of the race. These boys were going round the streets of Denver at 31 miles an hour. Evans had to chase back, but his team were up for it. They dropped back, they looked for their team leader, and they towed him back into the race. Yeah, helped there by Chris Butler from uh, Hilton Head, South Carolina. As the main field started to get down to around about 30 seconds, all of a sudden there was another very vicious attack, and this came from Jorib Megias. Melias starting to move away for Team Type 1 to try and give it uh, a nice Spanish flavour on an American team victory. It wasn't to be though, well it might have been yet because at this stage two riders were swept up from the breakaway. Lachlan Norris was the next one to come into the gun sights of the peloton and then it was all over. It all came together just six miles, about 11 kilometres from the finish. Yes, all of a sudden it was a Gruppo Compacto, as they say in Italian, a group all together. Then the sprinters started to lick their lips, but on the running towards the finish, there were still one or two more little attacks in store. Hayden Royalson, the Kiwi national champion, he leapt out of the pack. Yes, Hayden, the champion of New Zealand, was trying to rip away and steal the show. A big, strong display, but it wasn't to be. Even Andy Schleck, the man who has, for the last three years, finished second in the Tour de France, he launched an attack as well, but they wanted a sprint finish, and they chased. They certainly did, but you know what? When the sprinters feel they've got a chance of victory, they know how to do things to perfection. Daniel Oss was the first man to come around the corner, theoretically to lead out Ilya Viviani to get himself the win. But watch Liliani, Viviani here in second position, looking over his shoulder, going to say, mate, I'm going to give this win to you. He could have passed him, he didn't, because he didn't have to. It was a win for the team, this one, and a win for Daniel Oss for all of his hard work. But the man who has won the USA a Pro Cycling Challenge, Levi Leipheimer, he is the man who is the real winner today. Well, I'm not sure. I think Denver's pretty much a winner as well, because the, the state capital here has hosted an incredible finish to this bike race with hundreds of thousands of people turning up. So you are now absolutely up to date. There is this massive crowd here in the shadow of the state building now awaiting the prize presentation. Well, it is a massive, massive crowd down there. How am I going to get home tonight? You might ask the question here. They're just outside of our commentary box here in Denver. We're waiting for the podiums now. They are almost ready. And we also are trying to get some interviews for you. So we're going to bring you all that. We're going to take another break now. There's Levi Leipheimer waiting for the big moment. He really is Mr. America when he rides these big races. We'll be back here in Denver in just a moment. Leipheimer saluting the crowd there as we heard the Flowbots who have been with us all week in, uh, in kind anyway, but they're performing live here in Denver today. And the crowd here waiting now to see the prize presentation. Well, there it is. We can just about see the presentation dyers. The yellow jersey is ready there now to be presented to an American. And in fact, the top five riders are American in this inaugural US uh, Pro Cycling Challenge.
great moments, proud moments. An American takes out the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. Uh, Rick Shadow there, who's really supported this race. It's because of his generosity this race has become truly possible. And now uh, on the left of the picture, it looks like uh, John Hickenlooper there, the state governor as well. Well, the crowd for this still going crazy about this victory uh, for Levi Leipheimer. Just a mere 11 second winning over Christian van der Velde and 17 over TJ van Garderen. Yes, so the big uh, primary sponsors on the right. Rick and Richard are there on the right. The state governor is at the centre left there. And Levi Leipheimer completes a perfect opening inaugural uh, pro USA Pro Cycle Challenge ball. Well, you know, he's put a, a very disastrous Tour de France behind him, but he kept his uh, mental there. He kept his psychology right up there and came up with this great win here. He was a little bit upset to lose the, the lead on the descent down into Aspen on a treacherous uh, descent away from Independence Pass. But he came back the next day. Well, he bounced back the next day in that individual time trial to Vail. So John Hickenlooper on the left of our picture. He looks pretty fit, doesn't he, the state governor? Well, he is. He rides a bike. So he was delighted to be in the seat of state governor when this race came into town. And these are our two great hostesses here. They've had a week of planting those kisses on Levi Leipheimer, which they've loved doing. That's Rachel and Ashley. And they've enjoyed, they've brought a real ambience to the event. No, they certainly have, and uh, Levi Leipheimer has uh, stamped a certain amount of authority over the event as well. After recently winning the, uh, the Tour of Utah, I should say defending his, his uh, title of the Tour of Utah, to come here and win this race in a very dominant fashion. Let's have a look. Let's uh, go now with the highlights of Levi's tour here on stage one. He produced a win. He was so happy with this victory in Crestie Butte because he said he's never won a race with such an explosive finish in his life. And he came up alone. This was very special. I think he shocked himself with the viciousness of the attack he planted at around about 500 metres to go to the top of that climb. But uh, on stage three, Phil, that was when he was really impressive because that time trial, he had to turn around a 45-second deficit, which he did. Yes, in the time trial, and he won it by 58 hundredths of a second. Now, you've got to feel sorry for Christian van der Velde. This is the final standings now presented by United Healthcare. Levi Leipheimer, 11 seconds to the good. These actual gaps have not changed for three days. And five Americans uh, dominate the finishing positions. Well, this is Daniel Osser, the winner of the final stage. It wasn't really supposed to be like that. He was trying to lead out his teammate, Elia Viviani. But when Viviani saw that his teammate could get across the line in first place, it was payback for the two wins that the other young Italian had got. Yes, this is the first real big result for this man this year. He's only won one other race in his life, a small uh, single-day race in Italy in August last year. I guess he likes winning in August. Well, maybe that's uh, the time of the year for him, but uh, that was a real joy on his face there in a dominant fashion. Where he actually went round the corner in first place and stuck it all the way to the line. <laughs> Uh, looks like the champagne was a little bit too warm there. It took the cook off, cork off by itself as he sprays the crowd here. Daniel Ross, he won the Giro de, uh, del Veneto. And because of his victory and the way he won today, we've made him our road ID ride of the day. This is how he did it. Now, he was leading out Viviani here. You see Viviani checking over who's coming close. Nobody. OK, then let him win. And uh, that was a big win for Daniel Ross. He's only 24 years of age. And he's on the way, quite clearly has a personality too, because these last two days, when he's led his teammate Viviani to win, he's always smiled. That's a roadid.com ride of the day. Now we're getting through the starts of the prize presentations. We've, uh, um, we've seen uh, Daniel Ross here. Now we're going to call up second and third. There is Viviani. We'll see him again shortly to win the Green Points competition. He's happy enough. The second for him today was very special because his teammate won. He speaks extremely good English, by the way, and he's only 22 years of age. And he rides on the part American team here, because the bicycles Cannondale are built here in the United States. And so uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a home victory, too. Two wins now. His next big rendezvous will be the World Road Race Championships in Denmark, which is a flat course this year. Well, there's no hills in Denmark. And uh, as a sprinter, he'll be actually thinking he might be a world champion in about a month's time. Now, the next one is rather special because I really thought I would never mention Fred's name again on television. I've commentated him around the world for years and years. Now we're waiting for Fast Freddy to come on up and get a third place finish. He, uh, he's 38 years of age now, or he will be uh, next week, and uh, he hasn't been uh, really winning any races since he won 
a tour de Belle Grove, the first day in August 2007. There he is. He wanted to help out with this new American professional team, XG, and give the young kids some advice. And the best way to do it is to get back on the bike and start racing again. Look at him. Here we are. He's finished third. So as they look out uh, around now, Fast Freddy is going to step up on that podium alongside two Italians. Now, we're all going to take another break, but we are going to speak with Levi Leipheim. Just letting him get behind scenes there. So we will have an interview with Levi Leipheimer when we come back. And he is the first winner of the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. These boys, the first three on the day. And what a day it is here in Denver. We'll see you back with us in just a moment. And then we'll have Levi Leipheimer to talk with us. See you in a moment. The USA Pro Cycling Challenge is brought to you by Smash Burger, Smash, Sizzle, Saber. By the Shack Tour Tracker. And by Exergy Development, innovative, thinking, integrated energy. And by Waste Management, Think Green. Welcome back, the sun continues to shine. Let's go straight out, back to the podium here. And this is Rafael Montiel. He's won the Nissan King of the Mountains on the very last mountain of the race. And with all the mountains we've had, that in itself is a surprise. But the Colombians had to be somewhere. This is a great team. As a, a Colombian journalist told me this week, this is the next generation of great Colombian cyclists. And look at that. Just take a look at the flags. They took the top four places in the King of the Mountains. Well, I know they live at uh, altitude in Bogota, and they've brought that form here into the Colorado Rockies. Pedranza losing the title on the very last day. Back to the podium, because this is Alaya Viviani, the personality of the tour. He gets the green jersey. So this is the Smashburger Green Points jersey, the second most important uh, jersey in the competition. The most consistent daily finish in the last three days, two wins in a second. He consolidated that win here. Well, that is what you call consistent, and uh, he could have made it three in a row if he'd wanted to, but he preferred to gift that final stage to his own teammates. Which so I think takes a lot of class. Sorry. Uh, absolutely right. Viviani, in the end, uh, accumulated 50 points in that competition, uh, 25 more. 50% more than his teammate Daniel Oss. TJ Van Garden, that's a great sign when you can be that consistent. But TJ, the youngster, finishing third, Leipheimer fourth, and George Hincapi completing the top five. No, no, well, here we go, TJ Van Garden, best young rider for any young rider who's under 25 years of age at the start of a season. And he only just turned 23 last week. Coming thick and fast onto the podium now as uh, Sean Hunter on the left and Mike Plant on the right, the former president of the USA Cycling Federation. TJ Van Garden, he's the face of USA Cycling of the future. This man we really feel will mature into a winner of the Tour de France. He never lets us down. He's had the yellow for one day. He was bitterly disappointed, but he gets the sheets. Best young rider here, as he did in the Tour of California. He is a real star of the future. No, he certainly is. Uh, just have a look at this. For Look at the gaps for TJ Van Garderen. Three minutes and 18 seconds down to the second-place rider, Eduardo Beltran. Yes, and uh, these are the young boys here. They're all under 23. No, under 24, rather. And now I'm hearing that Bob Roll has now got up alongside Levi Leipheimer. So let's go and hear what he's got to say. Down to you, Bob. Levi, it looked like a very difficult stage out there with the technical finale. It didn't seem to be a flat stage. Noodle into the finish line whatsoever. No, no. You know what? Garmin Cervella really lit it up today. Uh, of course, it's their hometown. And, you know, it took the form, some of the best form of my career to, to beat Christian and Garmin Cervella this week. So... Hats off to them, you know, they're the, the local favorite, and uh, I really appreciate the race they put on. I mean, this is one of the, the best victories of my career, just the way it all played out, taking the jersey, losing the jersey, and then really having to pull out one of my best performances ever to take it back and, and hold on to it. And, of course, last and, and most importantly, my team was fantastic. Well, it seemed like the Tour de France was a little bit disappointing for the team, but since then you've been on fire. How did you uh, collect your thoughts and get your morale back for this very big race? Well, you know, I'm experienced, and, and I think that I've uh, been able to develop like a, a bit of a cold calculation over the years. You know, I won Switzerland. I had good morale going into the tour, but, you know, four or five crashes, it sets you back. And 
So I was just able to sort of refocus, use the tour, pick out some smaller goals, use it as training, and really, in the back of my mind, I had Tour of Utah and here in Colorado in my mind, and so couldn't have gone any better. Well, you've won the Tour of Switzerland, like I said, and the Tour of California a number of times, Tour of Utah also. How does this one rate with those victories? Well, you know, I think the crowd here today in Denver, I mean, it, I don't know if I've ever seen a bigger crowd as this in the United States, so that right there is, definitely makes an important victory. Thank you to all the fans that came out this week. It, it's been phenomenal. Would you consider coming back next year? Oh, without a doubt. You, you couldn't pay me to stay away. All right. Well, congratulations, <laughs> Levi. Great win. Thank you very much. Well said, Levi. He's 37, almost he'll be 38 years of age in October. He has a special uh, cycle ride down in his hometown these days of Santa Rosa in California. So if you fancy riding with Levi, you'll know how good he is then, believe me. This is it now. We're going to bring what I always call the most expensive line of washing onto the stage. As we look here, it looks as though uh, Tim Duggan got the most aggressive rider on the right there. That was the XG prize for him. The blue jersey, your best young rider is worn tonight by uh, TJ Van Gogh, and that's a Sheets competition, and the Smashburger points is gone to Alaya Viviani. Not smiling yet, he looks rather confused, doesn't he? But the Nissan King of the Mountains is Raphael Montiel. Then comes the big man, the Quiznos yellow jersey, the winner's jersey on the shoulder of Levi Leipheimer who at almost 38 years of age is simply getting better and better and better. So an absolutely tremendous result, especially for USA and Colombia. They were doing their own, dominating whenever they could. Well, we're going to have to say goodbye now from our live coverage here, uh, but I hope you've enjoyed it. This is a race which is going to stay in Colorado. It has been an outstanding success. Paul Sherry, Phil Ligat, Bob Rowe, goodbye. down the home straight, Patrick Gretsch has won this with his ride. Leipheimer's got the gap, Levi Leipheimer has ripped the field apart here, Leipheimer has cracked the big time, he wins the stage. Van Gordon sees the peloton, he's going backwards away from him, this is a great finish by George, now who would have said him that would win? TJ Van Gordon may not have won the stage, but he's in the next yellow jersey. He's given his all, that is all you can do. Mike Piper is back on top of his game here. That is unbelievable. Viviani's got a good pair of legs here. Laya Viviani takes it on the line. The best way for him to win this stage is to attack before he gets to the summit of the climb. Welcome back to the top of Alvarez in the Tour de France because that's what it feels like. Yeah, he's next looking for a gap there. Viviani has broken for the line again. Viviani has done it. Two out of two. That is amazing.